This portion of the video is to demonstrate the evaluation of the motor system of the neurologic exam. We're going to start with a general inspection again of the patient. Um, what is the patient's body position and posture? Uh, be able to maintain it comfortably. Are there any involuntary movements that the patient doesn't appear to be able to control? Next, we need to do an evaluation of general muscle bulk and muscle tone. So you can do this by, again, just looking at the different muscle areas and palpating the large muscle groups to see is there, if you can't see it visually, is there muscle tone and muscle bulk there. Finally, for evaluating tone, we need to move the joints. So we want to use a movement of a large joint. Again, just let me move your hand and your arm and just relax as much as you can. As I do the movement, I should feel a little tiny bit of resistance in the sense that it shouldn't feel like a little piece of spaghetti. But at the same time, I shouldn't feel any changes in the movement. So it should be a nice smooth movement as I go through. I need to do that bilaterally in both the upper and the lower extremity. So again, I'm just sort of doing a general movement of the extremity. I'm going to do this again also in the knees. So just again, just relax and let me move your leg for you. In here. If you have a suspicion about a specific muscle group, make sure you test that one individually. Next, we want to check uh, muscle strength of all the major uh, muscle groups in the upper and the lower extremity. So we're going to start with abduction of the shoulders. So I'm going to ask you um, to hold your arms out to the side um, and then hold them against my pushing down. For each one of these, what you're attempting to do is see if the patient can hold a position against your resistance. So again, hold your arms up and don't let me push them down. And I'm testing this bilaterally. You can relax now. A patient should be able to hold against some re reasonable pressure um, and not be able to let the arms fall. Next, I'm going to check. So that's basically the shoulder. Next, I'm going to check the elbow. We want to do these one at a time. So what I'm going to ask you to do is hold your arm up like this. I'm going to stabilize the shoulder so that the patient's only really doing the movement in the elbow itself. What I'm going to do is ask you to try and straighten your arm against my resistance. So try and straighten your arm for me. Okay, now try and bend it. I'm going to do the same thing in the other arm. Try and straighten it for me. Try and bend it. Thank you. We want to do the same thing in the wrist. If you could hold your arms up like this, and again, try and lift your hand against my hand. And try to only push it down, and do the same thing on the other side. Lift up and don't let me push it down. So we've checked wrist extension. Now what we'd like to do is check hand grip. For this one, you again can do this one bilaterally, but make sure that you have the patient holding your hand from the outside so that I come in from this direction. If I come in from this direction, the patient has an easier time of being able to twist my fingers and hurt me. But I want to be able to test his strength without them causing me any injury. So again, if you want to take both of my hands and squeeze my hands as tight as you can and relax. Now again, make sure you use two fingers because again, that makes it harder for the patient to be able to actually cause you injury if they've got too strong of a hand. So finally, also we want to check for finger spread. So I want you to hold your hands out like this. Keep your hands out, but don't let me close your fingers. Okay, thank you. Now I want to check the lower extremity. For most of these, we're going to have to do them one at a time. But again, make sure you compare side to side. So I want to be able to check hip flexion. So with this, I can have the patient sitting on the bed, and I can ask them to lift their leg against my hand. So if you can just try and raise your leg off the bed for me, and don't let me push it down. And now we're going to test the other side. All right, thank you. Now we're going to check at the level of the knee. So try and straighten your leg. Now try and bend it for me. And now the other side, straighten and bending. So we've done both knee flexion and extension. And then finally, we want to test for the ankles. So again, I want you to try and point your toes towards the sky, lift up your foot. All right, and then the same thing, lift your head, foot towards the sky. All right, now push down against my hand like you're pushing on a pedal. And the same thing here. All right, thank you. So that, again, checked general motor strength um, in both the upper and lower extremity bilaterally. If you need to do some special testing of the motor system, specifically to help you differentiate between a nerve root abnormality versus a peripheral nerve, you can do some additional strength in the lower extremity. Uh, so what we're going to check here is ankle inversion and eversion, as well as great toe strength. So we're going to start by having you hold out your foot for me. And what I want to ask you to do is turn your foot inwards against resistance. And now turn it outwards, and then the same thing on the other side. Turn it inwards, and turn it outwards. Okay. And now in addition, we can test the strength of the great toe. So I'd like you to push down on my finger with your big toe, just your big toe, and try and lift up with your big toe. And then the same thing on this side. Lift up, 
and push down. Okay, thank you. So, so this segment of the video is going to demonstrate the evaluation of coordination, or cerebellar function primarily. So what we're going to ask you to do is what we call rapid alternating movements. We're going to do this in both the upper and the lower extremities. So what I'm going to ask you to do is take your hands and rest them on your thighs, and then just flip them over and back, and do that as fast as you can. They should be able to do that repetitively and equally bilaterally without losing coordination of the movement. Now we're going to evaluate you being able to do something similar in your feet. So I'm going to pull out the stool because we're going to test toe tapping, but you really have to give them a surface to do this against. So what I'm going to ask you to do is tap your toes rapidly, one foot at a time. Now if you could do that with the other foot. All right, thank you. Again, they should be able to do it equally and bilaterally without losing coordination of the movement. Next, we're going to be able to do point-to-point -point movement. So what I'm going to ask you to do is we're going to start with your right hand, and take your index finger and come out here and touch my finger. And we want to try and get them to the extremes of movement. Now go back and touch your nose, and then my finger. Back to your nose, and my finger again, and one more time. They should be able to do this um, in multiple different locations with, again, uh, not losing the direct path. And now if we could do this with your other hand. Thank you, and again, to your nose, my finger, Nose, my finger. Okay, thank you. We do the test the same thing in the lower extremity by doing heel to shin. So I'd like to take your right foot and lift it up against your knee and just run it down the front of your shin. And do the other side. All right, thank you. Next, we're going to evaluate gait. So I'm going to ask the patient to stand up and walk for me across the room. And again, just evaluate how well they can do the walk and does it appear to be a coordinated movement. So if you could stand for me. So what I'm going to ask you to do is walk over to the corner of the room and then walk back. And walk back for me. So again, at this sense, just testing for a normal gait. You may not pull out an ataxia, though, um, with just normal gaits. You want to do some other additional testing. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is what we call a tandem walk. So it's like walking on a tightrope. So I want you to want to put one foot directly in front of the other. And if you could just walk over to the corner doing that for me. The patient should be able to do that as well as maintain their balance. I'm going to ask you to walk back. Only when you walk back, could you do that by walking on your toes? OK, thank you. And now I'm going to ask you to do the same thing again, only if you could walk on your heels with your toes up in the air. All right, thank you. You can walk back now. Testing for both toe walking and heel walking is going to not only evaluate for coordination, but in addition also evaluate for distal strength. So next I want to be able to test and make sure the patient can maintain their balance as a part of their proprioception. So I'm going to do the Romberg test. So I'm going to ask you to do is stand up in front of the table. Uh, this is going to be a situation where you're going to be evaluating if the patient can stand um, and maintain their balance with their eyes closed. If there's a problem and they start losing their balance and falling over, you want them to be in a situation where they can't fall far. So you want to be next to a table and standing next to them so that you can make sure that they don't lose their balance and fall down. So if you could place your feet close together, and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, and they should be able to maintain their balance standing there with that minimal movement. Uh, you can also challenge the patient slightly, just a slight tap on the shoulder, and see if that knocks them off balance. If they're already starting to wave and wobble with just closing their eyes, don't challenge them, because you don't want them to fall over. All right, if you can open your eyes now for me. The next thing we're going to evaluate for is pronator drift. So what I'm going to ask you to do is put your hands out in front of you, and hold your hands straight in front of you, like that. Now I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. In this position, the patient should be able to hold it in that same position, even with their eyes closed. If it were a positive test, and one arm, the arm would start to drift downward as well as rotate inward. Finally, you want to challenge them. I should be able to push down on one arm, and they should be able to return to the original position. So I'm going to push down on your arm, but I want you to try and keep it in the same place for me, OK? All right. And again, it should pop back to the original position that it was before. Thank you. You may open your eyes and you may sit down.